Magic is creating the illusion that you can defy the laws of nature. Magic is creating the illusion that you can defy the laws of nature. Science is the study of how the natural world works. This is science. Yeah! <laughs> That did not go well. Those ice cubes were so cold, I couldn't hold on to them. So I had dropped ice cubes all over my house. You see, I'm having some friends over for lunch, and I wanted to make sure that I had enough ice cubes to give everyone a cold drink. Hmm, maybe I should go back through the house and pick them all up. Nobody really minds a little dirt on their ice cubes, do they? Hey, buddy. Wait a minute. I wonder how many ice cubes I dropped. I know, I'll make a picture graph to help me figure it out. My picture graph will start with a line like this, near the left side of the page. On this vertical line, remember vertical means up and down, I'll write the name of whatever I want to keep track of. And that could be just about anything. Monkeys eating lunch, mm, cars in a parking garage, dogs doing yoga. You can make a picture graph of anything. But today, I want to track the number of ice cubes I dropped. So, I'll write ice cubes on the left side of my vertical line. Now, I'll draw a horizontal line. Horizontal means it goes sideways. I'll cross the lines into a corner down here. Below the horizontal bottom line, I'll write the names of the rooms in my house. I'll have a living room, kitchen, bedroom, and hallway. At the top, I'm going to draw what we call the key. Whenever you look at a picture graph, you should look at the key first. It's a very important piece of information that you need to understand the rest of the graph. I didn't have a lot of ice cubes when I started dropping. So I think for this chart, I'll make one ice cube equal to one. This one ice cube square that I've drawn will represent one ice cube. Hmm, as I was running through my house dropping ice cubes, where exactly did they fall? I remember I dropped three ice cubes in the living room, four ice cubes in the kitchen, two in my bedroom, and one in the hall. <coughs> Why would we use picture graphs instead of just numbers? Great question, student Steve. He sure is a cute kid. Why do we use picture graphs? Picture graphs make it easy to show and to understand information. Look at the one we just made. You can see the answer instantly. If I ask you where did I drop the most ice cubes? Me, 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 me. Student Steve? The kitchen. The tallest bar says you dropped the most in the kitchen. You are correct. On this graph, the tallest line shows the biggest number. Where did I drop the fewest? That would be the shortest column. The hall! The hall! <laughs> Yikes! That's really too loud, student Steve. Go easy, buddy. Calm down. So, how many ice cubes did I drop in my living room and my hallway? You can look at our graph and almost immediately tell it's... Four! 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 Ow! Student Steve, you're hurting my ears. But you are exactly right. As you can see on our picture graph, there are three in the living room and one in the hallway. Whew. I'm almost afraid to ask this question. How many ice cubes are in the kitchen and the bed? Six! Six, 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 six! Okay, okay. Six is correct, but that's really enough noise for me. Student Steve, why don't you go outside and play and run around a little? Oh, okay. I will. Thanks. Okay, now let's slow down and relax a little bit. There's one more question about this graph. 
How many ice cubes did I drop in my entire house? The whole thing. One, two, three, four. Ten, 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 ten. Correct. Now moving on, let's pretend that I dropped many, many more ice cubes. What if I had dropped 30 ice cubes in the living room, 40 ice cubes in the kitchen, 20 in my bedroom, and 10 in the hall? 33, 34, 35. Drawing all of those ice cubes on the chart would take a really long time and it would get pretty messy. But remember the key? This one ice cube symbol up here where I wrote one ice cube equals one, I'm going to change that so one ice cube equals 10. Now, every one of my ice cube drawings represents 10 ice cubes. See this one ice cube? Because of what the key says, this one ice cube now represents 10. How many ice cubes are in my kitchen? 10, 20, 30, 40. Every one of these ice cube drawings represents 10 ice cubes. Now the chart says the total number of ice cubes in my kitchen is 40. How many ice cubes are now in my hallway? It's only one cube on the chart. The key tells us one cube equals 10. That means there are 10 ice cubes in my hallway. So how many ice cubes are in my whole house? Because the key changed from one ice cube equals one to one ice cube equals 10, my house now has 100 ice cubes in it. What happens if I go crazy and, and change the key so one ice cube equals 1,000 ice cubes? Well, all of a sudden, according to the chart, my house is completely filled with ice cubes. Oh no. The key says one ice cube drawing represents 1,000 ice cubes. How many does that mean there are in my house? 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, 10,000, 10,000. There are 10,000 ice cubes in my house. That would be an avalanche of ice cubes. I better change that back to one ice cube equals one and we're safe again. Whew. That was us just pretending. We know there are only 10 ice cubes in my house. I'll go back and get them. Hold on a second. Where are my ice cubes and why is my floor all wet? I can't believe it. All of my ice cubes are gone. And more importantly, why is my floor all wet? How could this have happened? Give me a minute, give me a minute. I got this. If I concentrate and think logically, I'm sure I can figure this out. I've got it. A big snaggletooth walrus followed me into the house and has taken all of my ice cubes. Walruses love water and are almost always wet. So that's why the floors are soaked. Wait a minute, a walrus in the house. That doesn't really make sense, does it? What else could it possibly be? Let's make a bar graph. For this one, I asked 50 people, what is their favorite pet? The vertical line up and down on this graph will represent the number of people who told me about their favorite pet. The horizontal line side by side are the different types of pets my friends mentioned. I'm not great at drawing animals, and a bar graph is a really good way to track a lot of data without having to draw a lot. Like a picture graph, a bar graph is easy to read and will help you understand data quickly. What animals did my friends say were their favorites? The first pet is the horse potato. Uh, did I mention my friends have some strange pets? Next is the bald weasel, then the vampire snail, and last of all, a stick. Let's look at the numbers. 30 of my friends said their favorite pet is a horse potato. That means with my red pen, I'll draw a line next to the mark for the number 30, and I'll fill in the column I've made. Next, I've got a blue pen. And 25 of my friends like the bald weasel. Because 25 is between 20 and 30, I'll estimate where five would be, and I'll draw my line right here in the middle of the two. Then I'll fill in the column. 
Only five of my friends said the vampire snail was their favorite. A vampire snail doesn't really sound like very much fun, but one of my friends sent one for me to play with. Ah, it's kind of cute. Ah! It almost bit me. That's the fastest snail I've ever seen. I think I'll close this. <laughs> what a sweet animal. <laughs> uh, I'll let him out later. Five people voted for that little monster. I mean, uh, that sweet little snuggle bug. Boink, boink. I've got a yellow pen and I'll draw a line where I estimate five will be and fill in the column. 40 of my friends said their favorite pet was a stick. In their defense, have you ever played with a stick? It's awesome. And you only have to feed them once a day. I'll draw the top of the column at 40 and fill it in. One great thing about a bar graph is the data is really easy to understand. Hmm, let's see. Which pet is the most popular? The way our bar graph is set up, the tallest column would have the most votes for most popular. So we can see with 40 votes, the most popular pet amongst my friends is ba -ba -ba, the stick, which is the least popular. Vampire snail, probably for a good reason. You can see it's the shortest column, only five votes. Most bar graphs don't have a key like the picture graph does. These numbers on the vertical line tell us the information we would find on a key. So why use a bar graph? Because it's very easy to understand a lot of data quickly. There is one more way to display data that I want to show you today. This is going to be a line plot. It's another fun way to show data. Four of my friends and I went out to pick apples a few days ago. One of my friends picked six apples. Two of my friends picked seven apples. And one of my friends picked eight apples. I only picked three apples. Let me put this data on our line plot. One friend had six, so I put a dot here. Two friends had seven, two dots on seven. One friend got eight, wow. And then there's mine, I only picked three. I am at the bottom of the chart. This chart shows my friends picked more apples than me. I've got the whole basket of apples here and we can eat them. Wait a minute, they're gone. And the floor is soaking wet. It's the walrus again. No, it's the walrus in the house again. Hey, hey man, get off the counter. There are a lot of great ways to illustrate and understand data. Picture graphs, bar graphs, line plots. Each one has its own special way of helping us understand data better. Got lots of information you need to understand? Pick a line, bar, or picture graph and see how great it works. Ah, uh, hey man, get, get off the couch. I got it.